Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning. Thanks for being here. Uh, General Smith, uh, I was able to recently meet with some Marines that came from the Indo-Pacific. Uh, uh, great people. I mean, tell you, they're, they're exactly what we need in our military. You know, what resources can Congress assist with to better support our mission in the Indo-Pacific? Senator, thanks for that question, and thanks for the praise of our Marines. Uh, I share it. Uh, my own son is a Marine, um, although you know he's he's still he's still on the uh, on the. Uh, um, he's got to meet his recruiting goals. He's right? got to meet his recruiting goals. He's still <laughs> on probation. Um, what I would say, sir, is we need predictable, steady funding for our amphibious warfare ships. Uh, we need uh, L LHAs on four-year centers and LPDs on two-year centers, because that provides us the operational flexibility and mobility that's required to counter the PRC. I know you've kept an eye on the Middle East, and uh, we have uh, seen unmanned drones, uh, small unmanned drones. Um, talk about what we've learned and what we can take from there to the Indo-Pacific uh, in, in, in this next in, incursion. Yes, sir. Um, what we've learned is that directed energy weapons are going to be a thing of the future because we, we can't get into a reverse cost curve where we're expending, you know, million dollar missiles to shoot down hundred dollar drones. Um, we've got to invest in the technology and the capability to disable drones in flight, um, to disable their, um, their targeting infrastructure and to knock them down without shooting a missile at them because that's, uh, again, that's putting us on the wrong side of the cost curve. And we're working on that now at the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab. Yeah, I, th I think Senator King would, uh, would agree with you on that. We've talked about it quite often. Uh, Secretary Del Toro, the Navy recently released their 45-day shipbuilding review last month, and there are significant delays. Uh, the Columbia class are now 12 to 16 months late. Uh, we make components in, in Mobile for the Columbia class, and we hear a lot about studying this. and doing a report on that, uh, you know, we need results, obviously. And I know you're on top of that. What are we doing to fix this? Yes, sir. Well, it's just as one example, Senator, and I know your commitment and passion for this. You know, down in Austell, for example, the Navy actually worked very closely with Austell over the last couple of years to turn it into a steel production facility. Um, and I have been encouraging the big primes over the last two and a half years that I've been secretary aggressively to actually outsource more of their work hours to companies like Austell and the smaller shipyards so they can help with production. So in 23 alone, we had 3 million additional hours of outsourcing that's taken place. We hope to increase that in 24, hopefully to 6 million, right? And it's the smaller shipyards that actually help as part of the team to then increase the production rates. So that, with along with all the other investments, the $14 billion over the fit-up, basically, I think our, we're going to see production rates continue to grow in the future because of those efforts. Yeah, and we're also running into a problem. You know, we budget it, we appropriate it, but we're having a tough time allocating money. For some reason, yes, sir. Uh, we're, we're, we're running in a stonewall of, of people not doing their damn job, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, if we can't get the money allocated, we can't build anything. We can't pay people for work, and we're having a tough time now getting people to work uh, and people that are trained to work. And it's getting worse and worse. It is not getting better. Have you, um, you have obviously well, been addressing that. No, sir, and I agree with you. And, you know, with the continuing resolution, we can't allocate those funds until the funds are actually given to us. So I'm actually increasing our contracting workforce in 24 so that we could actually provide resources to the vendors far quicker once they get the allocate, once we get the authorizations and the appropriations in place. Yeah. And, you know, we're working very hard to train people. We're actually recruiting out of McDonald's, Walmarts, yes, training sir. welders and all those things. I mean, we're in a tough time right now of getting people actually off the couch back to work and, and getting them trained. And you're obviously talking with people about and that. And I think we need to get innovative, Senator. And one thing, I'll give you an example of something we just recently did over the last few weeks in Ohio, for example. So we met with the Boilermakers Union in Ohio because they have experienced uh, slowdowns, basically, in their, in their workforce. Um, so... Bartlett Industries in Ohio, for example, is training those boilermakers on how to actually work in their shipyards. And so, and then hopefully we're going to be providing those to Wisconsin to help with the, with the uh, Constellation class frigate in Wisconsin. Yeah. And Admiral, we're, we're, running, we're running low on people. And you talked earlier about 
about recruiting, uh, please tell me we're not dropping our standards uh, to recruit. Uh, that'd be the worst thing that we possibly could do, uh, drop our standard. We need a well-trained, obviously a, a group that wants to do it for the right reasons. Your thoughts? Yep, Senator Tubbo, we are not lowering our standards. We are working really hard to improve our recruiting enterprise to improve throughput per recruiter and, uh, and really look broadly at getting out to every zip code in America to bring that talent that we need. People that meet our standards, we want them on our team, every single one of them. Are we taking non-citizens, non-American citizens in the Navy? We only take people that are legally allowed to enter the Navy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair.